Hello, my name is Tori Kinneman, and I am an AMR survivor, patient advocate, and recently graduated medical student pursuing a residency in orthopedic surgery. My first confrontation with AMR occurred when I was a freshman in college. I was doing Division I collegiate gymnastics at the time, and about a week after our major championship competition, I had the gradual onset of pain in my left hamstring. Over the course of a week and after a number of misdiagnoses, I was eventually admitted to the hospital for suspected cellulitis or skin and soft tissue infection and started on broad spectrum antibiotics. However, within 48 hours, my condition precipitously declined and I was taken in for emergency surgery. That's when the surgeons discovered that I had an 18 centimeter abscess and associated muscle infection of my hamstring. It turned out to be a methicillin resistant staph aureus infection. I had eight surgeries in two weeks, spent over the month in the hospital, including five days in the ICU, and the next five months recovering at home. When I went back to school the following semester, I dedicated myself to research. I wanted to understand why infections happen to certain people and how we can prevent the spread of those infections. Uh, so I really dove into infection prevention and control, particularly in the athletic setting, as multi-drug resistant infections are much easier to prevent than they are to treat. So I think that that is a key area that needs much improvement moving forward. I will always remember what it felt like to be a patient lying in a hospital bed, not knowing if I was going to have my leg amputated in the upcoming surgery, or even if we were going to be able to treat the infection that was raging through my body. And that is something that I will always take with me as a doctor moving forward. Hi, my name is Bhakti. I'm an XDR tuberculosis survivor. In 2017, I was living a perfectly healthy life and completing my final year project when I started observing weight loss, weakness and stomach issues. With few medication, I managed to complete my degree and started looking for a job. Soon, I observed a lymphatic swelling on the right side of my neck. I visited a doctor who had done some primary investigation and prescribed me with the first-line TB medications. I went for a second opinion of an expert doctor who asked me to undergo a biopsy and few advanced testing. I was diagnosed with the extensive drug-resistant tuberculosis in which only 30 to 50% people survive. My two years treatment was that with the eight different antibiotics for two years and daily painful injections for eight months. This treatment comes with a cure as well as severe side effects like anxiety, depression, nausea, vomiting. My skin tone changed to reddish brown color. I also suffered from an optical neuropathy which results in a blurred vision. AMR is a silent pandemic. Drug resistance strains are already circulating in an environment. If it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. Be aware of AMR. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mashut from Nigeria, and I'm a clinical pharmacist by profession. In August 2020, I developed kidney stone, or diagnosis of kidney stone. It was partially treated with lithotripsin, the Lisa technology. And eventually, it had to be removed completely. The process had to be removed, had to be completed with open soya. After the surgery, I was given antibiotics. I was discharged home after about 10 days with a catheter. Three weeks later, the catheter was removed. And three and a half months later, I went back to the hospital to remove the stent. I developed cold and temperature and I was shivering. I naturally thought it was malaria. I went for malaria treatment with the ACT. I felt all right. But surprisingly, a few days later, the hospital was in the surface. And I decided to go for laboratory tests in a local, in my community. The outcome was typhoid and malaria again. About 10 days later, after I felt relief, the symptoms came up. And at that time, I was diagnosed of having contracted COVID-19. I had to be admitted, was on oxygen for about nine days at the hospital. After about 17 days in the hospital, I was discharged both. We see the symptoms of the UTI persistence, and uh, I had to go for another laboratory test, renal test, which now shows that it was no longer essential collab, but staff audits. The experience was frightening 
was life threatening. In fact, I almost died. When it became a case combined with COVID-19, the observation idea is that we need to improve on standards as well as the laboratories around. We also need to increase the training and capacity of the laboratory staff. We also need to ensure that uh, we have standard antibiotics and that by improving supply chain and quality of products. Thank you. I want to live. I'm not ready to die. My mum pleaded with a consultant as she lay in hospital during COVID, suffering from a drug-resistant pseudomonas infection deep in her lungs. She'd been hospitalised several times with an infection. This time, the second-line antibiotic hadn't worked. The fact that I was allowed to visit her told me they didn't think she'd make the night because visits during COVID times were not allowed until end of life. But they found an antibiotic that worked. She did live. Thank you to those antibiotics. Due to recurrent infections, they've decided she should now be on long-term antibiotics, which for the last two years has kept her infection-free. But we both know one day these antibiotics too will stop working. So it's the reason why I was happy to join the WHO task force of AMR survivors, to make sure that everyone understands the silent pandemic that antimicrobial resistance is, that we're looking at the end of the antibiotic age. As an infectious diseases clinical pharmacist leading antimicrobial stewardship programs, it was really difficult for me to experience AMR through my mother's post-operative urinary tract infection. Finding the needed antibiotics was challenging, and even when available, my mother couldn't understand why we have such inefficient treatment options for such a common illness. So in addition to the pain, frustration, and financial burden of a recurring infection, the stigma and psychological impact during the already tough Lebanese economic crisis was significant on her and on my family as well. My perception of AMR changed from a purely medical to a socio-behavioral economic problem, where anything from the direct home environment to access to medicines and neighborhood parks to war and climate change impact the risk for AMR as well as its outcomes. I realized that AMR really is a symptom of failed health systems, and in order to tackle AMR, significant cross-sectoral collaboration and research on both medical aspects and behavioral change leading to healthier environments is needed by policymakers, educators, healthcare workers, and patients. My name is Felix Liao from Indonesia. Currently, I'm working as a pediatrician, majoring in ICU in Harapan Kita National Women and Children Health Center, Jakarta. Talking about AMR may not be separated from my professional experience as a doctor and my personal experience as a caregiver. Most of my patients suffer from severe phenotype of disease. They need multi-invasive treatments and they also need high level of antibiotics due to AMR. Most of them die. Another point of view is my personal experience as a doctor. It was 2019 when my first son was born. He kept vomiting, he kept diarrhea since early in life. He could not tolerate to any kind of milk, from breast milk to medical purpose formula milk. He was prescribed many kinds of antibiotics without improvement. Earlier blood culture showed negative results, but next blood culture showed multi-resistant of gram-positive. He didn't come to home with parenteral nutrition. In the end, I lost him. I lost my son due to sepsis. AMR is real. AMR is invisible, but for me it's not. From the story above, we can learn some points. First, proper diagnosis should be made before prescribing antibiotics. Second, beware of hospital acquired infection. Do not go to the hospital or do not need hospital admission if there is no indications, if there is no emergency. Third, 
vaccine and a good hygiene habit can prevent AMR. So please keep your children vaccine up to date. Thank you.